often when you hear the term innovation in regards to education, people think it's synonymous with technology. So for example, if you use artificial intelligence, you're innovative. If you use any technology, whatever it is, you're innovative. And I can debunk that in one sentence. And do you know what a Scantron is? And I share that all the time. And for many, a Scantron, and I'm saying from my own personal experience, is accelerated bad practice. Using technology doesn't actually make you innovative. And why I say that it's accelerated bad practice, when I was a high school teacher, we got a Scantron, and what did I do immediately? This is very early on in my career. I just made everything multiple choice. It had nothing to do with how do I deepen learning for our students? It was like, how do I make my life easier? And there's great opportunities to, you know, utilize technology to make some things easier so you can actually focus on deep work. But I was actually disregarding deep work in just search of doing easier stuff. So it wasn't really benefiting my students, even though it saved me some time. So when you look at innovation, I just define it as doing new and better things. That's it. And it can be, for example, a first grade teacher having a student struggling with reading and understanding all the things they learned in school, all the, the different things they learned, wherever they learned them in professional learning and seeing that none of those things work. So what do you do in that situation? Do you just say, well, I guess this kid's never gonna be able to read or do you take your knowledge of things that you know and actually maybe alter, maybe tweak things in a, in a different way, whether that's invention, a totally new method or iteration, tweaking something that you've actually learned before to actually help that child read. And one of the reasons that's really important is because you get to understand that the majority of educators are innovators, but they don't necessarily see themselves that way because not all educators are really into technology, but it's actually finding new and better solutions to, to help the people you serve. That's what innovation is all about. And I was re reminded of this in this conversation today with Ryan Embriali. He is actually works with power schools. He's been in all levels of education and I just really appreciated his focus on innovation, what they're trying to do, how to really support schools and communities together. I found it really, really fascinating. So I've known Ryan forever, but this is actually the first time I've sat down to talk to him. I'm going to meet him in person when I keynote their conference right away. You're going to love this conversation. If you're into innovation and education, I think there's some really deep conversations that are happening here that are really, really important. Um, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you, how do you see innovation? What are some of the innovative practices happening in your school share that in the comments below um but if, if you're just listening to this on a walk on a run whatever i hope you enjoy it i really love the conversation welcome back to another episode of the innovators mindset podcast Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am so blessed today to have Ryan Embriali on the podcast. And it, it's super weird because Ryan and I were talking before. I've known Ryan forever. I've seen his name a million times, but we've actually never sat down and talked. So there's this thing with social media that I find really, really interesting is that you can kind of know someone, but then when you meet them online, or you're like, have we ever actually met? <laughs> have we ever met before? And so I'm like talking, I'm like, I know this guy, but how do I know this guy? So um, Ryan is actually doing, has done a ton of different roles. He's been a teacher, vice principal, principal, and now he works for power schools. And so um, I'm actually so blessed to be able to keynote their conference coming up in the next couple of weeks uh, in July, but I'm gonna let Ryan tell a little bit of himself. He's got a, a really innovative um, focus on education and the work that you're doing in power school is really amazing. So if you can just tell everyone who you are, what you do today and how you got there, I think it's a great place to start. Yeah, George, uh, first of all, thanks for, thanks for having me on the podcast. Yeah. I, um, I, I agree a hundred percent. It's so interesting. Like the circles that we're yeah. all in and, you know, a hundred percent, we know each other and it's like, we, we don't know each other at the same time. And, um, just blessed to be on here. Really appreciate it. Um, I spent my career in education. 26 years worth. Uh, as you said, I've done all various roles. You know, I'm a typical social studies educator. Uh, started out teaching mm -hmm. middle school, uh, favorite age group ever. I have a 12 year old who's about to turn 13 in a couple of weeks and yeah. uh, father of four girls. Uh, she's she's my baby and um, she's exhausting. And it's like, you think about what the classroom must be like with her right. and her friends. And I just can't even begin to wrap my head around it. Um, and then, you know, did, did a number of different positions. I, I worked in, um, most of the jobs in large urban suburban school districts, 
hundred thousand plus students. So, um, you know, complex bureaucratic organizations. And I've been with PowerSchool uh, coming up on three and a half years. Um, I am uh, the vice president of education strategy and government relations. I, you know, am, feel like I have one of the best jobs in the world. I get a chance to do things like this, have mm -hmm. great conversations with someone like you. I get to uh, present at conferences. I get to have conversations with uh, the product team at PowerSchool about the work we're doing to innovate. I get to survey and have conversations with teachers, administrators, um, industry insiders. And I lead a, a, an, an amazing group of educators who work at PowerSchool who've been in positions like superintendents, chief yeah. information officers, CFOs, those kind of roles, and who are really out there um, uh, talking about the work that PowerSchool does, um, supporting educators um, and you know, students, parents, teachers with all the various solutions that we have. So, you know, so, so I don't want to like, we're going to, I know we're going to talk about power school, some of the work that you're doing with them and, you know, some of the work of the organization. I, I want to learn a little bit more kind of about you too, because, yeah. and I don't, I don't actually, I don't know if this is going to be a good thing that I'm going to ask you. Cause I think a lot of people are like, I kind of want to get <laughs> education. Like if we're being honest, right. So we were like, well, he was in schools. Now he left. I want to do that. And so like, what, what, you know, what made you take that jump to work for, you know, like a, a, a business organization and actually leave, you know, public education? Uh, and, you know, and if, if this is bad, I'll cut it out. <laughs> no, so, no, 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 no. You're good. George, All right. Okay. I, I tell you, I have always had an interest. I, I was very involved. Um, even when I was a classroom teacher, I wanted to be involved in, in things that took me away from the building, away mm -hmm. from the district, so I could understand what was happening you know, outside whatever the defined walls you wanted to call it that that were around me. So whether that's in a district role or in a in a school role, um, uh, you know, as I mentioned to you earlier, I was on the ISTE board for a time. Yeah. Um, I've presented at national conferences for years in the work that that I was doing in, in various positions. And so I think there's always been this um, desire to impact in a way that's broader than just a than just a district or a school and uh, you know i tell you a power school <laughs> it's not a small organization it's it, right. you know we're, we're, we have a large footprint in the education space and so it was a great opportunity for me to take a role that allowed me to continue to do research on education continue to think about the great things that are happening in classrooms and then you know apply that back in a way that i felt i'm even to this day, still contributing is the best way to describe it. I'm talking to you from an event. We were just talking about this. I'm talking to you from an event yeah. where educators are together having conversations about what's pressing. You, you know, like there's there, and I just so appreciate that you say that. And I know that you had a large focus on innovation, um, you know, in your roles, especially I think at the end of your, your time with schools is that sometimes when in education, and I've been arguing this for a long time. And actually, like, as you're talking, I'm like, why haven't we talked sooner? It kind of bugs me, but that's all. <laughs> like, Cause we have like so much, you know, in common, you know, from our work is that if you don't actually look outside, what you get is kids to become really, really good at school, not anything else, but they, they, they've mastered the process of school. They learn how to, you know, basically do the check marks to get to the next level, to the next grade, all this other stuff. But they can't necessarily think they're not really seeing what's happening outside of education and they have that you know they get the diploma or you know at the end of their time in education but they don't really know what they're doing right because it's we've just kind of focused on this so we do have to kind of look outside um but here's like a little opposite of this question so you are working you know for you know a large company and it's focused on education but it's a, you know it's a business mm -hmm. what what skills as an educator have you do you feel have benefited um power schools that you brought to the table like because there's a lot of people you know like they're like ah there's you know i'm really good at teaching i'm really good at education but i couldn't leave it ever but obviously i like i know this from personal experience there's a ton of things um that educators would bring to an outside organization that outside organizations like we always talk about learning from google learning from apple and stuff like that but we, you never hear Apple saying like, we need to learn from teachers, right? And I think there's a lot of skills that are really transferable. Yeah, I, I tell you, what initially comes to mind is 
you know, school districts are complex. Uh, you're dealing with all of these different personalities that come into play. And I always say everybody, everybody, any educator will tell you, um, you everybody knows that everybody thinks they know their job. Mm -hmm. Like I know I, I was a student, therefore I know what it's like to be a teacher. And so one is you are patient. Uh, two, <laughs> you're a multitasker in all sorts of ways because the job of a, I mean, we know this, the job of a teacher in today's modern workforce is incredibly complex. Mm -hmm. It's incredibly complex. And so being able to be that 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 people person being able to navigate complex uh, challenges that are happening in the classroom, or if you're a district level administrator, dealing with you know complex bureaucracies, it's it's real. Those are real things that 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 teachers and educators have to deal with every single day. And I feel like all of those are transferable. I also think, in general, uh, the profession is full of patient caring, yep. loving people. And the more we can demonstrate that, yep. the better. Well, it, it, like, especially over the last few years, I think organizations outside of education have learned two things that would teachers would hugely benefit. First of all, um, like, you know, appreciating people, you know, as you said, like really taking care of, you know, people understanding who they are, you know, what their experience are and what they bring to the table. And, you know, there's nobody better than that than people within education, whether it's the teacher level, administrator level, whatever. But it's also um, organizations really figured out we need people who have the ability to learn and we don't necessarily know how to teach our people how to learn. Right. And they're yeah. like, like when you have to shift things, you know, I, I, I like hate this word when you have to pivot because <laughs> pivot was like the biggest word for like three years. Actually, oh, yeah. I said in a while, so I have a little PTSD with that word. So, um, but that is, you know, like the ability to learn. I think those those are skills that are, are really, really powerful. And, you know, yeah. obviously teachers bring the table. I, I will tell you the other thing that, you know, teachers definitely, you know, just bring to the table is it's amazing what kind of innovation happens in the classroom every single day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're not talking about these, this massive major innovations, like, oh my gosh, generative AI. That's not what I'm talking about. Like, sure, that that is something. But I'm talking about just the innovative mindset yep. of educators is transferable. And uh, it's so much fun to still go back into classrooms and watch just, you know, how innovative teachers can be. And that transfers then to kids. You know, I, I, I joke all the time. When I was with the Baltimore County Public Schools, it, I had a wonderful career there. I was um, the innovator, uh, uh, executive director of innovative learning. And I laughed all the time about the title because in a bureaucracy, you can only be so innovative. So, but what I, what I knew that I could do is give space for right. teachers to be innovative. And that's, the magic happens in the classroom every day. So. Yeah, you know, like that, you know, I know there's a good book on that topic about having interviews mindset. Uh, yeah, I've seen I've I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty good. But <laughs> that, that idea, like one of the things that I talk about explicitly in the book is that a lot of times we connect innovation to technology, but it's just doing new and better things. And it's actually like having a kid who struggles with reading in your classroom and say, look, all the things that we learn in university, they're not working with this kid. So what are some of the things that can change, can alter that would actually benefit? Because I know this kid. And I, I'm seeing, what, so maybe it's just a little tweak. Maybe it's something totally different. And so part of the reasoning that that book was really important for me to write was to get people to see, yeah, you might not be good with technology, but you are innovating constantly. And then once you actually realize that's what you do, then you then you become more cognizant of doing it continuously. And I think that's, and so I love, I am getting mad that I haven't talked to you before. Like we have so much in common with this stuff. All right, so tell me, tell me a little bit about power schools. Tell me about like, what do you do at power schools? Like, what's the focus of the organization? I know you actually told me about this education focus report and I'll ask you about that in a second. Um, some of the things are happening, but like, just tell us about power schools. Cause I, you know, a lot of people have no clue. And, and actually, to be honest with you, I don't know how much I've, I know about it and I should know a little bit before, before I come out there. So tell us a little bit about power schools. Well, I, we are in, first of all, power school is the largest ed tech uh, company in North America. Hmm. We have 
uh, 80% of the district's uh, schools across North America that, and when I say North America, I'm including Canada in yeah. this conversation, are using one of our solutions. Um, and uh, we're in 90 plus countries worldwide. So it's not just what's happening here in North America. We do quite a bit of work internationally as well. And that is continuing to, to expand. Um, what most people think about when they think about power school is uh, our original core product, which is really about uh, student information, our, our student information system, our SIS. But power school over the last uh, eight years has continued to um, uh, expand its portfolio of solutions. And so, you know, we are also uh, everything from learning management to uh, communications to analytics. Mm -hmm. And all of that is about putting the picture together around empowering personalized education for for students. And I mean, we really believe as a company, we're at that place where um, we we can begin to differenti differentiate the instructional experience for students um, around the world. And, uh, you know, when when you're at edge in a few mm -hmm. weeks in Seattle, Washington, July 23rd through 26th, um, we're going to be talking about all the innovations that we're doing and sort of the excitement that are that is behind so many of our solutions. When I when I think about power school in in 2024 and beyond, it's really about this concept of a single pane of glass where parents, teachers, students, leaders, whoever it might be, can come to one place mm -hmm. and get all the various pieces of information they need because we're bringing the analytics picture together. So yeah, and that's, it, a, it, that's a very quick summary. Yeah, and like, you know, I know, you know, you, you mentioned that you were in Baltimore and, you know, it's a very, you know, specific school district. It's going to be very different than school districts that, you know, I grew up in Canada versus, mm -hmm. you know, other places. And I think what people take for granted sometimes, and I, I really try my best to do this. I don't just show up, speak and like leave. I like try to like kind of understand what's going on. Try to like pick up things every time. Even when I was working in the school district, I was like half time working for my district, half time speaking. And I taught, told my superintendent, I said, the benefit is when I'm not working for you, I'm actually learning a bunch of things and I'm bringing them back to the district and you didn't pay for it because I'm not, I'm actually off the clock. And I think that's one of the things that I really appreciate about some of these organizations that you bring to the table. Like we always got to develop people inside of our organizations, you know, bring them up, understand the culture that we have, understand, you know, some of the things that go on, but having that kind of big picture view and seeing things, because I'm sure you know this, some people are like, oh, we are like so innovative. I'm going like, I don't think, <laughs> I don't know about that. But then some places they think they're so far behind. I'm like, wow, you're doing really incredible things. Like they, you, you typically don't have an understanding of kind of where you're at unless you kind of just see what other people are doing too and i think there's a real power of this and you you kind of mentioned this uh when we were planning for this podcast right before you, you told me about power schools has this education focus report and I, I think that's the there's i think there's more complex titles to that but you shared kind of four areas can you share some of those i don't know if you can remember the four off the top of your head because it's probably like a pretty robust <laughs> report so this isn't a test but you know, any <laughs> any insights you could provide, kind of like what what are some of the things that Power School has found? Yeah, so we we really did sort of focus on um, four key areas when when we were building out the 2024 Education Focus Report. It's our third year hmm. doing um, uh, a Power School uh, research study that comes out from uh, a survey that we put out to um, to educators, parents, students. Um, across all of our customer base. We also do focus groups. And then we also do a series of one-on-one -on -one interviews. And so that that all comes together to build out what is this year's education focus report. So uh, the, the four main um, key areas we focused on this year were student-driven personalized learning. Um, and I, I will say that, that that is a lot about changing traditional beliefs about what education looks like, a period, number one hurdle. Yeah. Like, that's a huge challenge. Yep. 
Uh, two is uh, bold leadership and data. Um, you know, that's a, I found it always a challenge when I was in a role in a district to connect the dots between all of this disparate data that exists out there in many, many different places and bring it together. So as leaders, leaders, teacher leaders, mm -hmm. school-based leaders, district level leaders can then use the data to help make determinations that make sense because data was everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, three is, is really about the workforce. It, it's about um, understanding what's necessary for, um, for the modern educational workforce to 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 take to go to that next step. So when I talk about like modern education workforce, it's like the concept of one, the shortage of teachers that exists yep. and that's growing. Two, it's about this whole model. It actually connects back to number one, which is student driven personalized learning. It's about the idea of um, the one teacher many student model and where we need to go there to 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 be innovative to rethink what it should look like and number four so student personalized driven learning bold leadership and then um modern workforce and number four is the whole concept of the school to home connection hmm. and where we need to go there um in terms of everything from uh, districts dealing with attendance challenges uh, districts dealing with communication challenges how are parents, students, guardians actually getting information? Right. What does that look like? And so that's a very, actually that was longer than it probably should have been, summary. <laughs> I thought it was great. <laughs> yeah, you know, one of the things that I actually, I, I really appreciate that you shared is um, the focus on leadership and then and then the workforce, because I think a lot of times it's it's kind of like, Hey, like teachers, I'm like, well, it's kind of the you issue. Like, is it men? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. what I remember yeah. this, I remember um an administrator saying, Yeah, oh, our teachers are so like, you know, they fight everything and they're, you know, they're just against all blah blah blah. I'm like, maybe it's you. <laughs> and they're like, What? I'm like, Well, your job is to lead. And so you're complaining that your teachers aren't gravitating towards what you're saying. So maybe you need to rethink how you're delivering the information. Maybe you need to rethink this because it's like, there, there is like a saying, I, I, I cannot, I, I heard it, I shared it with Katie Martin and um, she's a very good friend of mine. And it's like, if a teacher says the same thing to a kid a hundred times and the kid doesn't understand it, it's not the kid who's a slow learner. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's like, and it's the same as true with leadership. It's like, oh, I keep saying the same thing over and over again. And my teachers are still not getting it. It's like, well, maybe you'd say something different. Like maybe your approach is off. Well, you know what, what I tell you, George, there were a few top, what you're saying aligns directly with the top challenges that yeah. came out of the report. And they all, to me, they all intersect. So when we talk oh. about the top challenges, they're really the same thing. Keeping students academically engaged rose to the top. Shockingly, what also rose to the top is improving students showing up to school. Right. Well, it, those two go together. Yeah. If they're engaged, <laughs> if they're excited about right. school, right. they're going to come to school. And that also connects to the whole challenge that schools are dealing with right now about just effectively dealing with student behavior. Mm -hmm. Um uh, positive and negative, to be honest. And so I, I just think it's interesting because it all, it does all really, they're all the same thing. What we're saying is we've got to find a way to ensure that what we're doing in school is meaningful. Right. And, and, and engaging in a way that everyone wants to be there. And the there is to be defined by whatever model a school might be using. Any given so, time. so you're is people that are watching this, you're gonna get a little behind the scenes of like how I do keynotes for conferences right now. Cause I'm gonna ask Ryan something that typically uh, you people wouldn't catch this. So I think you're, you're gonna be introducing me. You're gonna be speaking right before I speak on that day. Is that correct? I, I, I believe there's something going on like that. Okay. That's I right. hope, I hope. Okay. So here's my like, request from you. Okay. 
I hope that even in a short amount of time before I speak, you actually briefly talk about those four things. And then part of what I'm going to try to do is actually connect that to the stuff I'm talking about. Because like all of those things I address in some way, but I would actually prefer that it's not like, so I can try to make a connection in my keynote to the stuff that you're already doing too. So like, I, that's my that's my little request. I do this all the time because it's not, I think a lot of times when people go into uh, school districts conferences, it's like, hey, here's Ryan, here's George, who should I listen to? And it's like, well, that's actually didn't do a really good job. It's actually part of my role to help connect some of the things I'm talking about to your your, the goals of the organization, you know, things like that. So that's my little side request. So we'll see if it happens. And people, you you know what? People are going to be listening to this. They're going to send it out. So we're going to see if they're going to do it. <laughs> so well, we're George, what I can tell you is if I'm doing the introduction, I promise to do that because I think right. that's, I, I think that's super powerful. Yeah. And it, it makes it all to your point. It totally. makes sense to the audience. Then. Yes. It, you know, it's not these disparate pieces. Yeah. And that, I think that's, that to me is like, how do I help? Part of my job is to create that through line, not just do a thing, right? Not just to do my thing. I just, you know, like, and sometimes it's like, Hey, can you send the slides ahead of time? I'm like, I can, but you're not going to get anything from them. <laughs> like, which is a little intentional, right? It's, it's me, it's me kind of like reading the room, seeing what's going on. All right. So this is actually the, the last question I have you. And so this is gonna be sent out um, I know to my audience, obviously, but I know they're going to send it out to everyone that's attending um, the conference in July. What is your hope for me when I speak to the group? What, what do you hope? How can I best support you if it's uh, effective? What, what does that look like to you? Well, I think we talked a little bit about it just mm -hmm. now. I, I think it's uh, I would love, you know, Power School, we're in. We are, we are in so many districts in North America, globally, yep. that um, most people have one of our solutions. So I think it's important that as a company, we're doing what we can to um, use our span of influence to share back what we're hearing in the field. So similar to you in that role, you spend your time, you know, writing, yep. listening, speaking. And so it, it it's similar, but different. And so to connect those two dots on that stage, I think is really important. And so it's not just about the solutions right. that we provide, the work we're doing around, you know, Power Buddy and generative AI and big data. It's also about making sure that um, our customer base and hopefully our future customer base mm. understands that we have an ear to what's happening in education and that we're listening to minds like yourself who are out there talking about what's happening and we're connecting the dots between reports that we're putting out and research that we're doing and um, the writings that you have, like, you know, your uh, the book, I think it's Innovator's Mindset, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah. And so, you know, connecting those dots, I think is really important. Yeah. And I think, I think part of it too, like, I, like, you know, just talking to you, my assumption is, Hey, these are the, the tools and some of the things that you're providing from power school are amazing. They're really beneficial, but only if you leverage them in a way that actually benefits your community. Right. So like what it looks like, how people use it in one space might look totally different because the communities are different. You know, this is part of it too. And so I, I love this. I'm like, I'm like, I, now I'm way more excited to meet you in person. Cause now like this is, and this is one of the reasons I love doing this is because it's like, Hey, what's up? I haven't, you know, now we're kind of, I, I love it. We haven't talked before. I'm a little upset about this. So I'm glad yeah, and the other thing, the other thing, George is just as to, to, you know, put a pin on it is it's also about, you know, it, it, it there is something to say about motivating people, get yeah. people excited and yeah. it, it's both educating and motivating. I think they can go together. Yeah, totally. All right. Well, hey, I can't wait to see you in person. Ryan, thanks for I you know, I just I kind of feel like you should be doing the keynote, but whatever. I'll do it. Oh no, you're gonna be fantastic. Right, well, gonna we're be gonna fantastic. be kind of co-keynoting now. So that's what's happening. <laughs> so but hey, everyone, thank you so much for listening. Ryan, thank you so much for taking your time. I know it's really hard to actually do this while you're on the road. I've had to do it before, and it's you know, you don't know how the internet's gonna be, you don't know what everything's gonna be set up. So um thanks everyone for listening, Ryan. Thanks for being on the podcast. Yeah. Have a great day.